Hey guys, so today we're going to do a quick review of tissue types. So hopefully by now you've watched the videos from Crash Course. If you have not, I recommend that you go and watch those before you come here and do the review. We're going to create a summary page of the highlights for these tissue types similar to what we did for organic molecules. So you'll want a piece of paper that you can then fold into quarters and we can put key points about each tissue type in each of those four uh, quarters of the page. So the first thing that you need to remember is that now tissues are kind of a collection of cells that are working together for a common function. We have four major tissue types. We've got muscle, nervous, epithelial, and connective tissue. So what I'm going to do is create that summary part of your page for each tissue type and then what we'll do is we'll take a little time to just go through the slides quickly and see if we missed any key points as we went along. Remember the goal here is that we're trying to take something that's really big and broad and we're kind of boiling it down to some key components. So let's talk about muscle tissue first. So muscle is specialized to do one thing, and that is contract. There are three different types of muscle tissue. We have smooth, cardiac, and skeletal muscle. So let's start off with smooth. And again, like we did for the organic molecules, what I'm putting on this one slide should fit in one of those quarters of the page. Now rather than listing all of the characteristics of a cell type, I find it easier to sometimes just get a visual. So a smooth muscle cell is going to be kind of tapered at the ends, and it's going to have a single nucleus. So a lot of times people say that it looks kind of like an almond, kind of tapered down at the ends, or like an Egyptian eye kind of stretched out and pointed at the ends. Smooth muscle cells are not striated. In fact, they're the only kind that is not. They are involuntary, which as we'll see in a minute is a good thing. Where do we fa uh, find smooth muscle? We're going to find it in the walls of hollow tubes and organs. So examples of that would be the digestive tract, the reproductive tract, urinary system, and blood vessels. So as you can see, it's a good thing that it's involuntary muscle because you don't want to have to stop and think about moving food through the digestive tract at every step. And I can just about guarantee you as someone who has given birth twice, that if we could consciously control the muscle of the uterus, it would be a whole lot harder for us to give birth because we would get to a point of contraction where our brains would say, yeah, no, I'm, no, I'm done. That's, I'm good. So it's good that that's an involuntary function. What is the function of smooth muscle? It's going to be to move things along, right? So it's helping to move food through the digestive tract, move the baby out. Now, with respect to blood vessels, I want to make a point here. It's not really moving the blood through the vessels, but it's directing the blood into different areas of vessels. What I mean by that is, if you think about your blood vessels kind of like a, a three-lane highway, right, and all the traffic is going down all three lanes, if I constrict my smooth muscle lining this and I make this now a one lane road, it's not going to make all my cars go down that one lane faster. In fact, it's going to slow traffic way, way down, right? We see that whenever we hit construction zone season in Michigan and all of the roads get narrowed and you're trying to go up north. So what will happen is 
some blood will continue down that open pathway, but then other blood will go off into other vessels where they're not constricted. So it's really helping to direct the flow of blood. Our second muscle type is cardiac muscle. And again, I'm kind of a visual person. So my cells here, instead of being tapered, are branched. Again, single nucleus. They are, again, striated, which means they look striped under a microscope. These cells are involuntary, so you are not consciously controlling their contraction, which, again, is a really good thing, because where is cardiac muscle found? Only in one place. It's found in the heart. If it was voluntary instead of involuntary, your cardiac muscle would stop contracting every time you fell asleep, which means you would be allowed one really long kind of permanent nap, and that's about it. Now, what's the function of cardiac muscle? It's to pump blood and help to maintain blood pressure. There are a couple of characteristics of cardiac muscle that are special. They have special structure, structures in them called intercalated or intercalated discs. And these help to coordinate the contraction. So they allow adjacent cells really rapid communication so that they can be together as a unit. And cardiac muscle is also special because it, because it is self-stimulating. So if you've ever watched Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, and the guy reaches into the other guy's chest and pulls out his heart, and the heart is beating in his hand, technically that could happen. And it's going to continue to beat until it runs out of ATP. Our third muscle type is skeletal muscle. These are long rod-shaped muscle cells with multiple nuclei. And we need that because these cells are incredibly long. In fact, skeletal muscle cells are as long as the muscles that they are in. So if you think about something like your um, rectus femoris muscle that's in your quadriceps group on the front of your thigh, that muscle might be a foot and a half long, and your cells will be that long as well. So we need to have multiple control centers or multiple sets of instructions for making proteins within the muscle cell. Skeletal muscle is striated, so again, has a striped appearance under a microscope. So remember, the only one that is not striped or striated is smooth. Skeletal muscle is technically voluntary. Although, can you stimulate it involuntarily? Yes. So you can have muscle spasms, like a charley horse, or you can have reflexes. So if the doctor taps right below my knee, I'm going to kick my leg out, even though I'm not consciously making a decision to do that. Where do we find skeletal muscle? It's going to be generally attached to bones directly or indirectly, and we're going to do that using tendons. And what are the functions of skeletal muscle? Well, it's going to obviously help us to move, give us support. It protects the internal organs that aren't already protected by bone. It's going to generate heat, and, and it's going to guard entrances and exits. So you have sphincter muscles that you can constrict until you can find a bathroom, for example. So that gives us a quick overview of 
muscular tissue. What I'd like to do real quick here is show you a few pictures. So up here on the left, you can see we have cardiac muscle and the arrow for the lowercase b here is pointing to these structures. Those are the intercalated discs that allow communication. And you can see how these cells kind of branch. So this would be cardiac muscle up here these long rods, this would be skeletal. And then down here you can see they kind of taper at the edges and only have one nucleus in them, so this is smooth. Okay, we'll stop there and we'll come back and talk about the next tissue type.